there's people both on the right and the left that want to see the Senate fail. And if the Senate fails, it, it can advance their political agenda, and I think that can happen. I think that both the right and the left can see some advantages in a, 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 a Senate meltdown. The Senate finance chairman says outside hostile groups, even lawmakers from both parties might be forcing a budget meltdown. Welcome back to Session 11 for an inside look at what's happening at the state capitol this week. We turn to our On Politics panel. Jay Root returns to our roundtable this morning. He's a reporter for the Associated Press uh, covering politics in Texas. And John Moritz is a longtime capitol reporter who recently became our digital executive producer here for KXAN.com. And our Josh Hinkle also joining the panel to feel your questions. Welcome. And what do you have to surmise from uh, Steve Ogden's comment there about the uh, forces from both the right and the left uh, uh, making this process a little more difficult for him? Well, the budget's gone off the rails in the Senate. I mean, we were supposed to have the budget up this last week, Thursday or Friday. It didn't happen. Um, Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst um, caused quite a stir when he said that he disagreed with the use of the rainy day fund. Everybody kind of thought that he was on that program, and um, I think some senators were sort of shocked to read his comments. And um, outside groups are, are pressuring uh, Republican senators to reject use of the rainy day fund, and um, <clears throat> I think you see a lot of Democrats that are very worried this is going to go to a conference committee and it comes back, and they don't have any rainy day fund money in there, and they they can't use they can't soften the blows of the for you know these cuts yeah. well uh, Ogden needs at least two or three Democrats to help uh, move this budget forward and right now given what Jay said and given what's out there given what the lieutenant governor said there's really not much for the Democrats to be for this bill because if it goes to conference and do Hearst and Ogden can't protect their interests uh, they're not going to have a happy session. Mm -hmm. I know we keep seeing them going to closed door caucuses and everything, so I can only wonder what they're in there hammering, hammering out. We actually have a live shot that's very close to one of the doors where the Democrat uh, caucus was meeting, and we actually heard some yelling and some maybe not nice words because it's a frustrating process for them, I think. Well, they, the, the Senate is a lot different from the House. Of the House, a lot of the conflicts spill out onto the floor and you see a lot of the emotion day in and day out in the Senate because you have this 21 vote rule where you need a super majority uh, of the senators to agree on something they go hash things out so things will sort of get heated and they'll go wait a minute let's stop and go in and, and then they'll come back out and start talking about my distinguished colleague uh, all of a sudden so um, but it really sort of went off the rails this week um, and you know, you talk about, he, it was Ogden, I believe, who used the word meltdown. I mean, that's, we're looking at meltdown right now. I think every session, the Senate always starts out very collegial, very much distinguished colleague. And as time compresses in a, a basically a 20-week window to get all this work done, tensions flare up. So they go behind closed doors, they let their, uh, their guards down, and occasionally, perhaps not as often as reporters would like, uh, it spills out. And, and, uh, and when it comes out, into the public, it's actually more news than it would otherwise be if they would be doing this in public all session long. You know, we you were just mentioning Steve Ogden's comments, and he actually termed those outside groups as hostile. And we've seen things online, you know, where the Texas Public Policy Foundation has released these commercials um, speaking out against the budget. And you've also got from the other side, the Center for Public Policy Priorities, actually urging senators to vote no because this doesn't do enough. The budget doesn't do enough. I think that's a we, this we're seeing more of that this year probably than we ever have, but you know we really are in the eye of the storm right now. I think this week we'll look back and say if they don't get a budget, we're going to look back and say this was the week when it went when it just went off when the wheels came off. You know if they do get a budget, this will have been a blip, but um, this is a pretty important week. It's been 20 years since the legislature adjourned without passing a budget, and the last time they did in 1991, they did so on purpose because they wanted to overhaul how state government operated. So they reviewed every state agency, who's spending what and how, and how can we trim it back, and then they went ahead and passed a budget fairly peacefully. But this time it's a little bit different. Yeah, that was back during the Ann Richards era. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst uh, held uh, about an hour meeting with the governor on Friday, and he came out saying there was some progress made on the budget. What are we to make from that meeting? I, I don't really know what 
to make from that meeting. I do know that Governor Perry has played a very strong role in the budget in terms of the rainy day fund. Perry has really laid down a marker and has pretty much said the conservative agenda is what I say it is, I think. Um, and, and he has a lot of followers uh, in, the, in the House, for example, a lot of these House freshmen who were elected and they feel like they rode his coattails in. And he has a, Perry has a lot of, uh, of influence in the legislature and um, he has said he, does, he doesn't plan on signing a bill that uses uh, rainy day fund money. Um, he hasn't said specifically that he will veto it, but um, if they can, I think Perry, what Perry's people want to do, they want to get this budget into the conference committee, which is a team of negotiators from both the House and the Senate. And if they can do that, when they go back to the floor, they don't need a supermajority again to suspend the rules, to bring it up. So that's what they want to move that ball into that court that will be more friendly to you know an insider team and that would be the worst case scenario for Democrats yeah. wouldn't you think? It would be and uh, the governor actually upped the ante a little bit with all the wildfires saying we're gonna need more money to deal with this um, emergency and that actually strengthens his hand a little bit mm -hmm. um, from that point of view. And we keep t uh, hearing from people, you know, on chat of, about uh, historical uses of the rainy day fund. And I, this is my first session, so maybe you guys know a little bit more about that. But it, it has been used in the past, correct? Oh, they use it every uh, every session to some extent, um, at least for the last three or four while we've been, you know, a little bit leaner times. Back in the uh, middle 90s when times were fine, the rainy day fund uh, wasn't even on the table. Even well, I, I remember in 2003, we, we covered that, that budget together when we were at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram together, and they drained it in 03, and it was not even a big deal. I mean, I, I don't, and in fact, I, I think what's, what's kind of being lost here is, you know, I did cover the 2010 campaign. I just don't remember the rainy day fund being a huge story. I mean, it was addressed a little bit. But the, like in the governor's race, they were sort of saying we're, it was more about the this, size of the shortfall. Well, no, but it, it, they didn't even really. I, I remember I had a colleague who did a story about the budget, about how they're not really talking about the big elephant in the room, the budget. They were talking more about tax returns and um, personal, you know, allegations of personal corruption and things like that. They just weren't talking about the budget that much. And I talked to a lot of House members who said we didn't really, you know, they campaigned on ta definitely, definitely on not raising taxes. But they, not a, a lot of them did not make uh, the rainy day fund a huge deal. Jay, John, and Josh, thank you for coming in. We appreciate hearing from you. We'll have more of Session 11 when we come back here on KXA.